Hello and welcome. I am uh, Dr. Kelly Klein and welcome to this. This is the first of our lecture segments in this introductory astronomy course. Um, I'll encourage you to, uh, first and foremost, please, if you have not already, read the syllabus very carefully and very completely. All the course information is in there, and so you definitely need to know that. Um, I'm not going to go over it in detail right here, because there's some other things I want to do. Um, to introduce myself, I, um, I grew up in Alaska, and I did graduate school down at the University of Colorado at Boulder, where I earned my uh, PhD in astrophysics. So, doesn't mean I know everything about astrophysics, but I know a fair bit, and so hopefully we'll be able to deal with any questions you may have on the subject. And um, looking ahead to this course in astronomy and all this, I guess uh, there, there are two big messages I want to give you. First of all, it's, it's kind of a good news, bad news sort of thing. Good news is we're going to study some awesome, wonderful, cool, amazing stuff in this course. We're going to talk about the possibilities of life on Mars and the rings of Saturn and the moons of Jupiter. And we're going to talk about where the stars came from. We're going to talk about black holes and galaxies. We'll talk about the Big Bang Theory and the history of the, the Earth and how that fits into everything. We're going to talk about some amazing, cool, fantastic stuff. At the same time, I guess if there's bad news, well, this course is a fair bit of work. We're going to have regular weekly assignments, we've got some projects, we've got some labs, there's a fair bit that goes into this course, but I think it's very much worth it. So if you're willing to put in the effort, the time, and the energy to do all that, I think you'll be well worth it, and I am willing to talk about any subjects and deal with all sorts of questions, anything vaguely related to astronomy and science and all that sort of thing. Here's your chance, so please, please ask me about that. I love talking about all this sort of thing. So. First, um, first people ask me, why, why is it that we do so what we need to do the math? Why, why will there be math in this course? Because the truth is, there will be math in this course. I think that in order to understand uh, astronomy as it is, as a science, we really have to do some significant mathematical calculations. So especially in, these, in, in our homework assignments, the regular assignments, you'll find that there's lots and lots of mathematics involved in this, not to scare you away. But at the same time to say, yes, this is important, this is a vital, this is a necessary part of this course. So why? Why is it? Well, for one thing, I want to say that the reason why this course exists, I mean, the vast majority of people who take this course will not take further courses in astronomy. The reason why this course exists is to teach you what the modern natural sciences are all about, what the physical sciences are. That's why most people take this course, to, you know, punch that requirement. So, I like to teach this course, astronomy, as an example, as a case study of a science. So, through this, so through this process, you know, I'm not just teaching astronomy, I'm teaching how do all the sciences work. By the time you get to the end of this, you know, you, hopefully you'll understand the basic pattern and could understand how physics or chemistry or any of the, the sciences work. So, we're doing, you know, astronomy as a science and... Mathematics is colossally involved with all the physical, natural sciences. It's very, very involved. Why? Why is it? Well, I, could, I would say another, the, the main reason why we need math so much is math is tremendously specific. Math is specific. Math is about the details, the particulars. I'm not just observing that a star is hot. I observe that it is 5,900 kelvins hot. I don't just observe the sun is far away. I observe it's 93 million miles is far away. When I observe the natural world um, as a scientist, when any scientist observes the natural world, what are we doing? We're measuring specific numbers. So in the sciences, we observe observe the natural world. That's an essential part of what the sciences are. And when we observe, we're measuring things. Measure numbers. Further, and then, okay, so I observe the natural world. I mean, this is the scientific method. We observe the natural world, oh, and then we try, we, we notice patterns in this, and then we propose theories and hypotheses to explain these patterns. In astronomy, as in the other natural sciences, theory what is a theory? A theory means an equation. We, we, use, we use the language of mathematics to write down our ideas. So it's not just I have a theory that there's nuclear fusion reactions going on inside the sun instead. No, my theory is a whole set of equations which describe how nuclear reactions go inside the sun. And I use these equations to predict specific numbers and say, okay, if my theory is right, the surface temperature of the sun should be 5,782 kelvins hot. And it turns out to be that. 
And that's, that's, that's why we use mathematics so much, because it's tremendously specific. I can come up with a theory that predicts specific exact numbers, which I can then measure and test and verify with my telescope or in the lab or something like that. And if I can create a theory which tells me what numbers I'm going to measure before I measure them, then I think probably my theory is telling me something useful about that. So that's why we need math, and why math will constitute a substantial portion of the material we will study in this course.